Okay, parents, I'm back again with our third multiplication strategy of arrays. And here I have some picture of my lovely clouds. I am a second grade teacher, definitely not an art teacher, um, but that's okay. How we teach arrays is based on rows and based on columns. And this part right here is actually the hardest part of learning the array strategy because believe it or not, students do not know um, the difference between rows and columns. I've taught them a little something that I thought of. I tell them to make an L with their left hand. And when you make an L over that picture or over that worksheet or over your test, this part of your, of your fingers, that would be your thumb, this part of the L represents the rows because rows go across and your pointer finger that would be up or this part of the L represents the columns because columns go up and down. So I just kind of taught that, that when you hold up the L over the picture, your thumb would represent the rows because it goes across this way and your pointer finger of the L represents the columns because they go up and down. And so I just kind of teach them to hold that above their picture of their array and that this is the rows and this is the columns. So that's definitely essential that they know the difference between rows and columns for an array. How the verbiage that I use for this array is that I try to teach my students that rows come first. Now, um, not necessarily in every problem or not that they can be um, um, altered between the two. Columns could come first, especially depending on how a test were to ask a question. But we've just for now been practicing rows first. I have my student write, students write the word rows over here to the side. And you know, you might get a little confused by that, meaning like, okay, well, Ms. Garza, that's, they, they're going up and down. Why would you write the rows? I'm trying to teach the students that when you stack a first set of numbers like this, for example, it's gonna look like a column at first, it's gonna look like a stack at first, but that essentially, this cloud right here is the beginning of that row. This cloud right here is the beginning of that row. This cloud right here is the beginning of that row. So we write our rows over here. I teach them that in this corner is the multiplication symbol because we're gonna be multiplying. And then that obviously we would write columns up here um, and so therefore we count and I even for some students they need to circle they need to um, more concretely or abstractly see it so we find rows first and I have them box or circle their rows if that helps them more I'm trying to hold the phone and and you can see here that we have three rows so I have them write their three above the word rows, and that means three rows. We know our X means of multiplying, so we have three rows of. Now we need to find our columns, which is one column, two column, three column, four column, five column. And write that by the word columns. And so then we come down here, and we know that our multiplication problem is now three times five. We also take it a step further by writing out because again we want them to understand the concept that it is three groups because rows also mean groups or I should have put rows but it does mean groups three groups three rows of five columns or in this case clouds equals and then this is where um, obviously we would want multiplication facts to start coming into place but I also teach them well first off I'll back up just a second we've been learning that any multiplication with a five in it is super easy because you can skip count by fives but I also allow them to use repeated addition on the array strategy so if I have five clouds five clouds and five clouds five five and five these two fives make 10, plus this leftover five makes 15. Therefore, I could have skip counted by fives to get to 15, or I could have tree, repeated addition added over here 
to get 15 and ultimately yes I do allow the kids to check themselves by counting but we want our counting to be our last resort and so they would count five in each row making it 15 and that is the array strategy I hope this helps thanks much